<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast everyone goes for. He's enjoying his Quaker puffed wheat. Yep. And I go for Quaker puffed rice, too. Right. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the ready-to-serve cereals shot from guns. They're made from the choice, flavor-rich premium grains. And they're shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. What's more, they're shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. Don't wait. Tomorrow, sure, get Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue packages with the famous smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns. Tex Carson and Pierre Beauvais were standing at the end of a long bar. They seemed to be studying a map, but in reality they were listening intently to the low-voiced conversation of the hard-faced group of men at the corner table. Good enough. May we. In a case like this, I always ask myself what Sergeant Preston would want us to do. He will be here later tonight. Yeah, not soon enough for doing a good. Just about ready to move out. Where is the newspaper office they talk about? Down toward the end of the main street. This sergeant does not like us to get into fights. Sure enough, want us to warn this hombre that runs the newspaper. We And if we just happen to be there when the trouble starts, he, he wouldn't mind our lending a helping hand. May no. Besides, that newspaper fellow's got a mighty pretty daughter. Hello. Then the duty is clear. I think so, too. Come on, Bo. Oh, merci. What do you mean, mercy? Uh, thank you. You have called me Ansem. I did not. You call me Bo. It mean Ansem. Not in my language, it don't. It's the same thing as hey you. Come on. Tex and Pierre left the cafe and walked down the main street. Soon they had left the row of brightly lighted cafes behind and had reached the business section of the town. The stores and offices were closed for the night. But toward the end of the street, there was one light still burning. Yeah, this is the place. Klondike Clarion. Will Edgar Publisher. Uh, there is much glass here in front. They will break it all. Yeah, somebody's coming. Oh, it's a boy. Yes? What is it? Why, hello, son. Who are you? I'm Buddy Edgar. Tex, you say this Edgar has a daughter. You want to see my sister? Oh, may we? We want to talk with your dad, buddy. Well, you better stay right where you are. I'll call him. Dad, there's a couple of suspicious-looking characters out here that want to talk to you. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. The boy has called you suspicious, Dad. It's the company I'm keeping. Yes? Uh, Mr. Edgar, my name is Tex Carson, and this is Pierre Beauvais. We've got a little friendly warning to give you. You said so. Did you come straight from the gold commissioner's office? Well, I, I don't know what that means, but we heard some men talking in the Last Chance Cafe. We thought you ought to know about it. What men? What did they say? Well, we're strangers here. We don't know them, but it sounded to us as if they meant to break up your shop and put you out of business. Hmm. Maybe you can make a guess as to who they are. Lucky Kendall's men, of course. Boy, oh, come in, gentlemen. Thanks. I'm sorry if I was unfriendly. 
I thought you might be in Kendall's pay, too. Is uh, Kendall the gold commissioner for the district? No, no, that's not. What's all the trouble about? Well, my paper came out today. There was an editorial in it about Norton. I practically called him a crook. He is, too. I said that he took orders from Kendall. You see, he's made a ruling that no one can prospect Wishbone Creek. That's a few miles down the river toward Dawson. Oh, may we? We, we know the place. No one can prospect it without a permit from Norton's office. But he hasn't set any date when permits can be obtained. Now, I say it's a lot of hanky-panky to make the prospectors around here move on. You figure there's gold on the creek? Plenty of it. And Kendall wants it all. But he can only stake two claims. His men will stake for him. Well, when are they coming after me? It won't be long. You better get your friends together so they can help you fight them all. No, no. There's no one in town who isn't afraid of Kendall. Buddy and Bill and I will have to fight alone. Oh, don't worry, Dad. They may break the windows in front, but we won't let them touch the press. Uh, my daughter, gentlemen. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Yeah, uh, Tex Carson, Miss Edgar. Uh, Pierre Beauvais. Uh, my friend, he calls me Beau for short. It means answer. In oh. Texas, it's short for hope. <laughs> hey, hey. What was that? Somebody tossed a stone through the front window. Quick, get down behind the counter. All right, put out the lamp, buddy. Right. Quickly, the editor, his son and daughter, Tex and Pierre, took cover behind the wooden counter that separated the front of the store from the presses in the rear. A second later, shots rang off in the street, and bullets crashed through the front windows. Tex, Pierre, and the editor opened fire and returned. For the next 15 minutes, the fight went on. The defenders of the newspaper office only had gun flashes for targets. But Tex and Pierre scored a hit apiece. And finally, Kendall's men realized they had no chance of breaking into the office. Their firing ceased. Yeah, yeah I guess they've gone. Have you got any lumber around, Mr. Edgar? We're bought up the front. Gee, that's just a good idea. Front windows of the office were boarded up. And as Tex and Pierre were finishing the job, they saw Sergeant Preston ride into town. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, it's the sergeant, all right. That's King running beside him. Hello there. The sergeant reined up in response to Tex's greeting. He was taken into the newspaper office and told of everything that had happened that night. Then he questioned the editor about the events leading up to the attack. And your editorial could be the only reason for their trying to wreck the shop. That's right. Could you identify any of the men who were outside here tonight? Hey, no, it was too dark. Pierre and I can identify the men we saw talking in the cafe. Well, more than likely, they're not to be found in town right now. No, the first thing I'd better do is have a talk with the district commissioner. You say his name's Norton. Yes, that's right. Where's he live? In back of his office. I'll see him tonight. Hey, Sergeant... I'll be staying here. But I wonder if you could see that Bell and Buddy got home safely. Our cabin's on the way to Norton's office. Well, I'll be glad to take them home. Oh, Pierre will go with you. Pierre will stand guard outside the cabin all night long. No, Pierre. It's the presses that are in danger. If you want to stand guard, you can stay right here. Ho, ho, ho. Si vous voulez, Sergeant. Shall we go, Miss Edgar? Uh, yes, Sergeant. Just as soon as I get my coat. Is King coming with us, Sergeant? Of course. Oh, I swear. <laughs> Gosh, you're a beauty, King. I sure wish I had a dog like you. The sergeant and King escorted Bell and Buddy to their cabin and then went on to the district commissioner's office. Norton was surly and openly resented what he called the sergeant's officiousness. I fail to see why the way in which I run my office is any of your business. We both work for the government, Norton. If you issue an order, it's up to the Northwest Mounted Police to see it is carried out. On what authority did you make your ruling about Wishbone Creek? On this authority, Sergeant. This letter from the Territorial Commissioner. Read it. I will. No one will be allowed to prospect Wishbone Creek without a permit from your office. You will be informed later when to start issuing such permits. Are you satisfied, Sergeant? For the time being, yes. Thanks, Norton. Thank you and good night. Come on. Good night. <laughs> As soon as the sergeant left the office, Norton returned to his living quarters and started to dress. He had just finished when he heard a knock at the front door. What? Uh, who can that be? He hurried to open it. Oh, Kendall, Kendall, come in. I was just on my way over to your place. Preston was here. I know that, I saw him. What did he want? Well, he didn't exactly accuse me, but he figures I had something to do with the newspaper office being shot up tonight. You're in the clear there. I know. 
But then he started asking questions about the permit business. Well? I showed him the first letter I got. So? That settles it. But it doesn't. Suppose he goes on to Dawson. He'll find out about the second letter. That they've changed their minds. That no permits are required. And that the creek is open to prospectors on midnight of the 15th. You never received a second letter. Oh, I'm not worried about myself. I can say it never arrived. That's all right. But the 15th is tomorrow. Preston can go to Dawson and get back here before midnight. He'll tell everybody. What does that do to our plans? It ruins them. If the prospectors find out anybody can stake a claim on the wishbone after midnight tomorrow night... Preston can try to get back here. But he won't make it. What are you doing there, kid? What? Who's there? It's me, Red. I got a kid here. He was listening at this open window. Bring him inside. Yeah. Kid? What's the kid doing around here at this time of night? Get on. What? It's Edgar's boy. He's heard everything we said. Everything you said. That's too bad. We'll have to get rid of him. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, what's your favorite color? Mine's... Well, sometimes I think my favorite color is red. And then again, sometimes I think it's blue. You know, maybe that's why I kind of go for those packages that Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice come in. They're red and blue. Matter of fact, I'm looking at one of these packages now. Got it right in my hand. And that reminds me. There's something else I go for on the front of every package of these swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. It's the famous Smiling Quaker Man. Yes, sir. When you ask your grocer for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, he's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh, shot from guns cereal. My, but you're flattering. Yes, like I say... Huh? Who said that? Why, I did. You? Who are you? Why, I'm the Quaker man on the package. You were just talking about me. Well, I was, but... Well, gee, I never expected you to say anything. Well, I don't normally. Wish I could. You do? Yes. I wish I could say good morning to all the boys and girls and their families when they have me on their breakfast table. That would be nice. But look, why not say hello now? Fine idea. Hello, boys and girls. When you see me smiling at you from the package, that's my way of saying good morning. And what's more, I'm mighty glad to see you enjoy those breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, fellas and girls, that's the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from guns. Just remember to get these crisp, tender, king-size grains exploded up to eight times normal size, be sure to ask for crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Buy the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. When Sergeant Preston returned to the newspaper office, he held a council of war with Will Edgar, Tex, and Pierre. I agree with you, Edgar. There's something wrong here, and Norton's mixed up in it. But I saw a letter from the territorial commissioner, and Norton was ordered to post that notice about the permits. Well, when is he going to start issuing them? Well, that's the big thing. This letter was dated a month ago. He should have received the authority by now. I'm going on to Dawson tonight. Oh, you are? I'll start at once. I'll have a talk with Norton's chief. Come right back. In the meantime, I'd like you to... Uh, Bill, what's the matter? Have you seen Buddy? Uh, Not since he left here. Oh, where can he be? He must be at home. No, I looked in his room just before I went to bed, and he wasn't there. There. He may have gone out to the stable. No, I looked all around. I called him, and then I thought he might have come back here. Well, now there's no sense in getting excited about it. He certainly hasn't run away. I keep thinking of something he said just before he went to his room. What? He wished he belonged to the Northwest Mountain. 
he'd get the goods on Kendall and send him to jail. Oh, he admires you, Sergeant. He likes to imitate the people he admires. I'm afraid that... Oh, I don't know exactly, but I've looked everywhere and I can't find him. King will do that for us, Bell. King? Yes, he'll trail him wherever he is. But you were going to Dawson. The boy comes first. However, Tex, have you forgotten how to ride a horse since you came to the Yukon? Forgotten how? Why, Sergeant, that's like asking me if I've forgotten how to breathe. Well, how about you going to Dawson in my place? Why, sure thing. You mean ride your horse? I'd like you to make it fast. He's traveled a long way. Perhaps we've got a fresh one. Well, I've got a chestnut that's plenty fast. You're welcome to him, Tex. Good enough. I'll hit the trail prompt. Just as soon as I write a note to the commissioner, uh, pencil and paper, Will? They're on the desk. Oh, thanks. The note written, the sergeant accompanied Tex and Bell to the editor's cabin. Tex saddled the chestnut and raced out of town. Then King was given one of Buddy's mittens to smell. Find him, boy. He's going straight for the window. That must have been how Buddy left. Go on, King. Out, fella. Follow him. We'll find him, Bell. Don't worry. King jumped through the open window, and the sergeant followed him. The great dog led the way down the main street to Norton's office. He sniffed at the door for a second and then started on, but the sergeant called him back. Hold it, King. I'm going to ask Norton if he's seen the boy. From the way King was acting, the sergeant knew Buddy was not in the office, but he wanted to study Norton's reaction when he was told the boy was missing. What? You again? Now what do you want? Can't you let a man sleep? I'm looking for Buddy Edgar. Y you know what? Will Edgar's son. He's disappeared. Well, what makes you think I know anything about it? That doesn't matter, do you? No. That's all. Go on, King. <laughs> Norton watched the sergeant and King head up the street to the next corner and then turn toward the north. Immediately, Norton was out of the office and on his way to the Last Chance Cafe. He found Lucky Kendall in the back room. Now what, Norton? It's Preston again. He's looking for the boy. He'll never find him. Don't kid yourself. That dog of his can follow any trail. And what if he can? That cave's a good hideout. Because you can see anybody coming up the mountain toward it. Red has a rifle and he shoots straight. So does the Mountie. What if he gets Red before Red gets him? We'll take care of the possibility. Go on home, Norton. You'll never see Preston or the boy again. All night long, King led the way through the forest to the north of the town. And just at dawn, he and the sergeant reached the base of the mountain. Here, the trees thinned out. But King kept straight on, up the twisting, climbing trail, the terrain becoming more and more rugged with every step. At last, he stopped at the bottom of a steep ascent, leading up to a rocky ledge. There was an opening in the sheer wall of rock rising from the ledge, and King growled, his sensitive nose lifted to the downslope breeze. He turned and looked at his master. End of the trail, boy. But you don't like heading up this slope to the ledge, do you? Well, neither do I, fellow. There's not a bit of cover. However, there's a chance we can find some way to get above the cave without being seen and then dropping down to the ledge. Yeah, we'll try it. Come on, boy. The sergeant and the dog circled to the left until they could no longer be seen from the ledge. And then they started up. Here, the ground was even more treacherous and the slope of the mountain steeper. Still, they kept climbing from one precarious foothold to the next. Now, the wind sweeping down the mountainside became a gale and the fight against it took all their strength. They reached a point well above the ledge where the cave was and started along a narrow ridge toward it. Directly above the cave, the sergeant began the descent. Once, his footing slipped. In a flash, King grasped the coat of his uniform in his teeth and braced himself. The sergeant recovered his balance. Oh, thanks, boy. We'll take it easier. Foot by foot, they worked their way down until the ledge and the opening of the cave were only ten feet below. I have to make a little noise when I drop down at the ledge, King. Better not do it directly in front of the opening. You stay here, fella. The sergeant crawled to his right about thirty feet. Then he set himself and took the leap. Red, inside the cave, heard him land and ran to the opening, his rifle ready. The sergeant started for his own gun, but Red was squeezing the trigger when King dropped on him from above. The shot from the rifle was deflected. Red was knocked to the ground, and a moment later, the sergeant had snapped a pair of handcuffs on his wrists. That takes care of you, mister. You're under arrest. King ran into the cave where Buddy was lying on the ground, bound and gagged. The sergeant freed him. Buddy... Why'd they do this to you? Why'd they bring you up here? Because I heard them, Sergeant. I heard Norton and Kendall talking about Wishbone Creek. 
It'll be open for staking tonight at midnight. Oh? And you don't need a permit or anything. Norton isn't telling anybody until Kendall and his men stake all the good ground. So that's the game. Well, we'll tell the prospectors, buddy, and we'll get back to town in plenty of time to do it. Let's go. At 8 o'clock that night, Will, Edgar, Bell, and Pierre sat down to supper. The long wait had exhausted their hope, and not a word was spoken as they ate. Then suddenly, they heard King's bark outside. They rose from their seats, their faces transformed by expectancy, and hurried to the door. Bobby! That boy, you sheep! You can thank Sergeant and King for that. Inside, Red. All right, I'm going. The next few minutes were filled with excited questions and explanations. And they were waiting for us on the way back, too, weren't they, Sergeant? Well, we didn't see anybody. The king made us take a long detour. That's why we're so late. It was an ambush, I bet. And the sergeant would have shot it out with those crooks, except that he didn't want to waste time. Uh, you brought great news for the miner, sergeant. I'll post a bulletin in front of the shop and see... What is it, king? Well, we have put your horse in the stable, sergeant. But that horse sounds as if he's just outside. That's right. I'll be back. So chestnut will. Yes, the chestnut. If the horse has come back, where is the great rider from Texas? That's what we'll have to find out. Here. I'll saddle Blackie and lead the chestnut and follow the Dawson trail. You can lock Red up in the stable after I've gone. May we? Come King. The trail to Dawson followed the banks of the Klondike. The sergeant rode slowly, looking for any signs of trouble. He noticed that as he neared the opening of Wishbone Creek, the chestnut became more and more nervous. But it was King's insistent barking that made him rein up. Hold oh, fellow. Hold oh, on. Something wrong here, boy? The great dog was standing on the banks of the river, and he seemed to be asking permission to plunge into the stream. Something on the other side? Well, we'll investigate. The ford just ahead. Get up, Lucky. The sergeant crossed the river at the ford with King swimming strongly at his side. Up, Lucky. Come up now. When they reached the other side, the dog led the way back up the bank and straight to a clump of trees at the water's edge. There, in the tangled underbrush, King knows the still figure of a man. Oh, Blackie, easy. <laughs> Tex. Wounded, King. If I don't think it's serious, we'll get it bandaged. Just as the sergeant finished bandaging his shoulder, Tex stirred and his eyes opened slowly. Sergeant. Hello, Tex. I've got a letter for you. Well, that's all right. I can guess what's in it. Yeah. What happened to you? Wishbone Creek. Kendall's men. There's about 20 of them guarding the mouth. It's open to prospectors at midnight. I know. But they won't let anybody near it. Hmm. There's a box canyon at the head of the creek, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Waterfall there where the creek starts. That would be a good place to round up the gang. They're near the mouth of the creek. Yes, I know. Are you strong enough to ride back to town? Uh, I guess so. Take it easy. Good. I'll give you a hand. Yeah, fine. <laughs> the sergeant helped Tex mount the chestnut, and they rode back to town. When they reached the Edgar cabin, the sergeant outlined his plan. So it seems that Kendall means to stop anyone getting near the creek before midnight. Mm -hmm. However, I have a plan that might work. Will, could you find six men with good horses? That should be easy. Well, I'll ride with me. You must let me come with you, sergeant. Of course, Pierre. But six men against all of Kendall's. All of the prospectors in town will be in on this. Yes? Now, you go to all the cafes. Huh? Tell them to slip out of town and meet you on the north trail as soon as they can. Tell them to come well armed. Uh -huh. You'll lead them as far north as the ridge and then west to the opening of the Box Canyon at the head of Wishbone Creek. Not in the canyon, you understand. There's plenty of cover outside. They must be well hidden because just before 12 o'clock... At just before 12 o'clock that night, Kendall was conferring with one of his men at the opening of Wishbone Creek. Didn't see any sign of the Mountie coming back from the mountain, boss. And they spread out a good way. Couldn't have got past us. Red probably took care of him up at the cave. We'll find out tomorrow. He said to come back here when it got real dark. Yeah. At 12 o'clock, we'll ride up to Crick and stake our claims. We'll register them in the morning. Don't seem like there'll be any trouble. Nah, nothing to worry oh, about. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Norton, what are you doing out here? Steady. Something's going wrong. What? I don't know exactly. The town's awful quiet. There's hardly anybody in the cafes. I can't figure out where the prospectors have gone. I was afraid it might be here. If they show up, they'll stop lead. Oh, listen. Yeah, those are my men. But what are they shooting at? We'll find out. Come on. Stay, boy. Get up. Get up. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. They left it. What is it? Half a dozen guys. They cut through the trees and are riding up the creek. Well, come on. Get after them. We are, boss. Follow me. Follow the boss, man. Get up. 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 Get up.
Kendall and his men urged their mounts in pursuit of half a dozen shadowy figures racing up the banks of the creek. One mile, two miles, the canyon loomed ahead. They're heading straight for the canyon. That's as likely a place for gold as there is on the creek. They won't stake any claim in there. Maybe they figure they can hold us off. We're going in after them. Go give them a chance to get set. On, Kendall and his men rode into the canyon. And then as the moon broke through the clouds and silvered the waterfall, they could see the men they'd been chasing, dismounted now and taking cover behind the rocks. Oh, hold on, hold on, steady work. All right, smoke them out. Five minutes, Kendall and his men blasted away, but suddenly they heard shots behind them. Kendall, there's some more at the opening of the canyon. I can see. There's a lot of them. We're trapped in here. You let us straight into a trap. Shut up and shoot. But ten minutes later, even Kendall had to realize their position was hopeless. There was only the blank wall of the canyon and the waterfall ahead. There was no escape through the narrow opening of the canyon. Several of Kendall's men had been wounded, and the others refused to fight anymore. Hold on, your guns. Come out the open with your hands up. Kendall, that was Preston. You want to go to jail? I want to live. I'm giving up. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's nothing else to do. No chance for a getaway now. All right, Preston, you win. All right, boys, dress them up. The prospectors closed in on the gang and prepared to march them back to town. Sergeant Preston reined up in front of Kendall and Norton as their hands were being tied behind their backs. Easy, fella. Well, Norton, I have a letter from the commissioner. It's an order to arrest you. Now, wait a minute. I can explain. You can explain to a judge. What's the charge against me? There's a long list, Kendall. Conspiracy, assault, willful destruction of property, abduction, and attempted murder. It's after midnight now, and the wishbone is open to prospectors. But you and your men will be staking out your claims on a prison cell. This case is closed. (laughs) In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Follow the tip of many a top-action Hollywood movie star. Eat nourishing breakfasts of delicious Quaker-puffed wheat or Quaker-puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes extra health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Buy a package of Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice tomorrow. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of fire on the trail. King and I were looking for Corporal Lacey when we saw a blazing cabin on the trail. We stopped to fight the fire, but before we could reach it, someone struck me on the head. When I came to and King was gone, I was told that he'd perished in the fire. What followed was the thrill of a lifetime. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker...